SFJ 4x4 Studios presents in my in my oversized four wheel drive Jeep, a Jeep podcast starring industry experts. Pure monosity. <laughs> what? What? Say that again. With mad scientist Scott Brown, use my drill press as a sort of lathe. Our host Neil Simpson. If one light goes out, they all go out. Filled with shenanigans. We, we are really professional with Jeeps. This is I Speak Jeep. Good morning, people. <laughs> hey, man. Good morning. Roar. Afternoon. Roar. Evening. <laughs> Wherever, however you're joining us, man. Oh, you're a hippie. This is the I, I Speak Jeep doctor. podcast. I think the witch doctor is better. No, man. <laughs> this is episode 49, and uh, I heard we were talking about joints, man. Oh, boy. Here we are. That's, that's kind. <laughs> I can't what, get my what, hair on. Uh, you, you said this kind, had, Scott. What do you mean this kind? Uh, oh, jo- uh, what are you talking about? A tie rod. What are you talking about, man? Uh, I'm talking about... Uh, and heim joints. Heim joints, flex joints. And bushings. Non-joint. Chuck, Chuck Lorre is <laughs> chiming in. Tommy Chong. <laughs> and how'd you get him on? <laughs> hey, when you know people, we got connections. <laughs> I'm gonna but, tie my hair back. Somebody, God, how do how do women and long haired individuals guy, do this? Somebody get this guy a hair tie. Oh <laughs> no, I know what happens <laughs> next. Davey, get him a zip tie. <laughs> zip, a zip tie. Go get him a zip tie. So for those listening in right now, uh obviously this is our Halloween episode and both Neil and Scott have dressed up. And Neil is wearing a wig. He's having costume difficulties. <sighs> there might be a, a, a costume. I'm putting my hair in a ponytail at this point. I, it's what a zip tie is for. <sighs> I am dressed as a Jeeposaurus Rex. <laughs> a Jeeposaurus Rex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try headphones and my hippie hat on top. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I'm telling you, just let the hair hang in front of the face oh, all the way, just because I, of it, and it's over. You can't see as it is. I That'd can't see as it is. Today's episode <laughs> is brought to us by uh, the one, the only uh, Jason Simcox, the Angry Turtle, um, and he has provided us our donuts for Monday Ooh. from Brant's Apple Donuts. Ooh, Ooh, buddy. Yeah. For yep, those yep. that don't know, we have a secret, good place to go to. If you if you've never been to Brant's. You got to go to Brands. He also uh, went ahead and bought us uh, four honey bears mm. because he, he thought that would be cute. Honey bear suckers. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he's trying to say about us, but no. uh, uh, I yeah. think there's one for each of us here on set. Um, folks, if you're, <laughs> oh, my hat. <laughs> oh, I had a wardrobe malfunction. He did. I had Let's a wardrobe see. malfunction. I don't think you've had your wardrobe work for you yet. If you're listening to us <laughs> on, on iTunes and, and, and whatever. Um, Davey, go get him a zip tie. You're going to want to go and find this episode on YouTube. Uh, you can find that over the I Speak Jeep podcast. Just uh, to watch Neil play with his oh, luscious hair. God, my luscious hair. <laughs> <laughs> this is very challenging. I, I have a new appreciation Good for time. my wife. Right? Oh, that's from stage left. My <laughs> zip tie is entry. I can't even see. <laughs> it tickles my nose. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh. Now, who made a good wardrobe choice? This guy. I'm warm. I have cute eyes that you know all the girls like. I have cute eyes. <laughs> Nobody can see them over Nobody your can hair. can see them on your cousin's <laughs> hair. <laughs> Yeah. Those, the girls that uh, like it are, are my wife and I my think daughter. Your wig's too far forward is your problem. <laughs> you think my wig's too far forward? There we go. Oh, now I've got like a like a forehead. Again. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's oh, better. That, oops, yeah, but I oh. have my headphones on now. Like, ah! uh, five minutes. <laughs> there we go. All right, all right. I we're, should start the timer now that we've had all this right. Fun. That's oh, those, man, those, I feel bad if anybody was like, oh, I'm going to check out this Jeep talk show uh, yeah, podcast. Quickly clicked off. Uh, Chuck's <sighs> chiming in, Tommy and the CJ Soros. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's right, man. My wife well, last night was like, you should be a Jeeposaurus. I was like, <gasps> Jeeposaurus Rex. That is perfect. I got hair in my face. I, I feel bad for my wife and my daughter at this right? point. 
It's full commitment. This is full commit. I, <laughs> I always jokingly said, like, my daughter is, like, complaining about her hair. I'd be like, well, we can shave it off. Like, that's your option. Uh, Joe that's, says, hi, Drew. That's rough. <sighs> hi, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> of course. That's rough. Um, whoo, let's, yeah, God, I, feel, I really, some, some type of way, like where, you know, you talk about, you know, quality content. Somebody is like, I'm going to listen to this Jeep show. It's 40, it's episode 49. I bet they're pretty good. Nope. They just listen to me for, uh, I don't know, five minutes attempt to, well, to fix why my don't hair. You, why don't you introduce yourself, hippie? Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. My name is Neil with SFJ4x4.com, and my esteemed colleague, uh, highly coveted individual, 36 Ford Crazy on Instagram, <laughs> and and uh, general mad scientist of many, many auto uh, auto enthusiastic um, pursuits, yep. Jeepasaurus. Jeepasaurus. Scott Brown. Scott Brown, the, <laughs> mad, the mad scientist. Yeah, just doing How many wh- people at SEMA do you think are going to be like, hey- Where's the mad scientist? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. I, I was doing wiring on a certain green CJ this morning. Okay. Those that know, the, know what I'm talking about. And those that know, that know, huh? I, I, if you don't Let's know do what I'm donuts. talking about, Let's you, do you should look at the YouTube. Have a donut. Absolutely. You should look up he stole YouTube. The, he stole the donuts from me. <laughs> well, you did, You weren't eating one. Yeah. Davey, Savage, you want a donut, man? Oh, why is Smile, he Davey. Oh, 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 he smiled. Oh, eating my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, this is so hard. <laughs> this is so hard. Oh my gosh, that one was down my throat. I felt it come back up. <laughs> what are you doing on the weekends, Neil? Ay, ay, ay. Oh boy. We're going to, I mean, I really was ready to commit to this, um, but Wait, I'm feeling like. It's not going to last long. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it's all going to have to, it's all going to, I tried. I really. I wanted to be. Nope, there goes my headset. All right, I'm done. <laughs> mm. Wig's coming off. I'm just going to keep doing my sorusness. Wig is off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Chuck says dip those in coffee for a magical Halloween treat. Uh, uh, I agree. Uh huh. If I drank coffee, I would try that. That would probably be delicious. Oh, wow. I do not. You mm. would be, this would be good in, though. I do not feel some type of way about having long hair. Hot chocolate. Put that in hot chocolate. Mm-hmm. That would be that would be that what's would up. be good. All right. So as we just munch in people's ears, and we do as a, sort as of apologize should. for that. If you if you want to know what we're experiencing, you should go get some donuts. Yes, it's a requirement. And uh, and like I said, we can easily be bought and sold by donuts. So uh, thank you to Jason yeah, for his true. contribution to the podcast. Um, so what did you do over the weekend? I did everything. Um, and of course, in, in reasonable uh, preparation for SEMA as well, I uh, managed to continue to work on the house with the framing and windows. We now are official. I would like to, I can, I can sort of, I'm like this close to actually calling it a house. It's still a storage, um, storage shed, people. It is still a storage shed, but I am allowed to have a house on the property. We have um, appropriately navigated uh, small town or local government ordinances, mm-hmm. uh, appropriately had things uh, rezoned, and the property formally identifying as an industrial... Formally uh, known as. Formally known <laughs> as an industrial <laughs> parcel um, now uh, can be a homestead. So, yay, big... Big thing we we accomplished last week, yep. um, and and always a testament to small town government or just just local politics. Everybody gets so embroiled in in you know big uh, existential conversation that really you know may or may not uh, make a difference. Small town politics. Um, I was told we are the first individuals directly affected by a zoning change who came and represented themselves within the last seven years. I mean, I just go to your meetings, people. Yeah, go to your meetings. It was amazing. I, I learned so much about what was going on around town, and uh, they were tickled at the fact that, you know, we wanted to uh, to to be involved at the level we needed to be. Yep. Right? We didn't need to get in there and meddle by anything. Yeah. Um, to show your support. Yeah, exactly, and say, hey, so you know, I'm interested. We're the we're the people who want to to rezone this, and yes. and we're here to answer and we're questions here to as needed. Reinvest. Yes. Without question. Yep. So that was excellent. And then, uh, you know, spent that. And we also did, you know, Halloween activities with the kids. When I did a trunk or treat. Uh, I saw a couple other, you know, fun uh, Jeep-inspired trunk or treats around uh, 
you know, around the old book of faces and Instagrams. And, uh, uh, you know, we actually went to one sponsored by a local church here and kids had a spectacular time and then got right back into the house build. And then Sunday was dedicated to general preparations for SEMA 2022, which I'll be, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, or viewing it, uh, I'll be dipping out shortly after the podcast, go finish uh, final pack the bags and get on an airplane, mm-hmm. leaving on an airplane, jet plane. Definitely. Don't know when I'll be back again. <laughs> ne- next, next Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, yeah. He's so literal. If, if, he, if you're not, Greg will this have Friday. A, an aneurysm. Yeah. Um, so not if he's um, in Vegas, he'll be fine. Eh, yeah. He's got a um, plan. You disrupt that plan, he's gonna uh, be upset. That's true. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so we uh. Uh, we'll be, we'll be flying out this evening and, uh, flying back, um, red eye home, uh, Thursday on the Friday. So we'll be missing the Friday activities of SEMA. So also um, a, a shout out to someone we know is going to be there that Greg has been diehard following lately is Ricky and the boss. So if, if, really? if he disappears for a while, they have a booth set up. Why does he have a booth? Starstruck. I have no idea. Apparently huh. he's been going to SEMA for years. Oh, go figure. So, yeah. So we'll be there. Uh, I have a couple industry <clears throat> acquaintances. <coughs> oh, donut in the wrong hole. <laughs> oh, my. Um, this is why you should not talk and eat people. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> uh, I had a couple industry friends and acquaintances who were already out there. They were Instagramming pictures of their food. I uh, thought that was fitting, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, Somebody I know that's in the cars was there like last week. Yeah. It's crazy. It, you know what? It, it behooves you to fly in on like Thursday. Um, not Friday because every like the tickets go up, but if you fly in like the Thursday before, um, in the past I flew in on, on Sunday and, uh, I really liked getting there Sunday. Um, and then Monday is all setup day and you get to do all the behind the scenes. Also, we're not exactly sure that Savage is going to be allowed into the facility. Um, that his, his Se- credentials, not playing nice. his credentials have been in, in, uh, held up in purgatory. So it might be one of those things where I'm doing like coverage and like I go into the main hall and have to like run back out and talk to Davey and then run back in and then run just, back out. Just leave him. <laughs> can, can you just take him in like a little kid? <laughs> Savage. <laughs> like a little leash. Right. Like a, like a little leash, a backpack I leash. I know. Put an emotional support vest on him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Davey, you can borrow Davey. my costume. Davey is support, getting a support saurus. A support saurus. He's going to have like a, like a bright colored vest. If Seema's listening in, they just canceled his credentials. <laughs> He's not getting in at all now. This is, this is my support videographer. Yes. This is my support saurus. <laughs> it's 2022. Don't judge me. Yeah, as you should not. Oh, uh, the savage. Oh, where I've been and where I've done. <laughs> <laughs> I, Ooh, that's, that, is, that, is, that is dangerous territory. Um, we will we will definitely, uh, you know, we'll have to spend a little bit of time and uh, get him credentialed, um, but get him in and uh, do some walk around. We'll be obviously you're, vlogging you're the experience. over there? That donut's still coming out for you. It's like, I got you. Man, remember that time we actually had a credible, uh, cre- a credible Jeep automotive <sighs> podcast? I think that disappeared about two weeks ago, oh, three weeks ago. Oh, no. We just started going downhill. Oh, no. Jeez, that's not good. That's not our, good. Our peak was Tow Truck Jesus. Tow Truck that's, Jesus. That's true. <laughs> Oh my gosh! No, we uh we're we're gonna have that. We're flying out this evening. Um, get, land uh this this you know because they're three four hours behind us, and uh, so we'll land. You're time um, traveling. We are time traveling. <laughs> we're going back in time, and so we're leaving here. Uh, you know, nine ish, and we'll be arriving there at like eleven ish, and um, you know, we'll be uh, there on Halloween, and it's the very first year we flew back in. Um, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, we flew on Halloween. And so it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Good old Fremont Street. Whew, Fremont, the airplane, the party had started on the airplane when are, we left. Are you taking before. your wig and hat 
I will not be taking my way to that. <laughs> I uh, I don't know if that would get through TSA. I am all about just just kind of uh, professional and appropriate through TSA. Uh, arms yeah, out if I you want to touch me. I um, I don't believe you. I've seen the pictures. I have actually <laughs> been uh, and and just I, uh, I have actually been um, held in question at the airport before. No. I have. Why does that? I have been detained. Me? I was detained uh, at the uh, Arizona airport many mm-hmm. years How ago. How did you get detained in Arizona? I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just that is a 100 percent factual. It's, uh, it's close enough to story. Vegas. What stays in there? What happens in what Arizona happens in Arizona stays, stays in Arizona. You know what? Funny. You know what? I'm going to talk about it for just the two seconds because, <laughs> of course, you know. Uh, they believed that I had a compound that was used in explosives mm. uh nope that was um that was found on my my book bag uh-huh. and um i was backpacking through mexico and uh and i was flying back and uh so what it comes down to is i have a a particular maintenance medicine called uh synthroid and apparently one of those compounds can blow you up. Well, if you in an appropriate quantity, apparent. I don't know. Somebody smarter than me mixes things together and either blows things oh, up or silly, injects it into their skin. People. I don't know. Yeah, those those great, you know, big beautiful brains that so you waste just, it. You know, be addicted to cars like I am. You're that's no that's exactly it, right? <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I was detained. Uh, it was a it was a big brouhaha. You know, they had to thoroughly vet me before uh, I was allowed on the plane. And this was this was shortly after two thousand and one. So I just kind of like, oh yeah, yeah. I just I just played cool. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Um, <clears throat> I was with a. a they weren't a, messing around back then. At oh, all. There, there was, was no 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 no. There was no messing around. This was. This was high. You know, it's funny because I I was I didn't actually fly pre to uh, 9-11. I, I flew post. Same. But my sister flew a lot pre 9-11. So we would go right up to the terminal. We would wish her goodbye. We'd greet her. She got off the plane. The whole kit and caboodle. Oh, yeah. You used to be able to just walk right in. Oh, yeah. Right. And then um, and then everything changed, obviously. Yeah. But with that said, um, yeah, the whole detainee and then our, my party that I was with uh, was all like, hot and bothered because they thought we were going to miss our flight and i said i just i just hunker down and answer the questions and do the things you Mm -hmm. know anywho so yeah we'll be we'll be headed out and we'll bring you back some very cool coverage and obviously uh it's we'll uh, talk a lot about next week and then in the very near future we have to figure out we invited um, daddy jeep daddy jeep on to talk about his youtube channel really should email him this week huh we really should that's (laughs) that would be professional of us Yeah. yeah That would be professional. Daddy Jeep, if you're listening, we're we're going to be reaching out. I promise. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, I did lots of like Halloween, family, house, all that kind of stuff, and uh, and SEMA prep. Yourself? I right. I also did uh, all the tr- trunk or treats. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had one at my kid's school, and we uh, took the seven, decorated it. Uh, my wife did a wonderful job, pulled decorations out of cl- clear air. I swear. Uh, I was shocked when I saw the photos. I was do like, we have wow. pictures? Do we have pictures for those I, who are uh, on our viewing That would have been nice. You know, that would have been nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you got a producer that could have done things. We have yeah. a producer. and That guy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh-huh. uh, there, there is pictures on, on my Instagram and on, on the face books of faces. So, uh-huh. uh, those that know, no. And uh, after that, I also worked on... He's so secretive uh, today. Yeah, those why? Know, oh, those no. no, no. He's, he's been yeah. saying that those all day. No, no. Also worked on my uh, my thirty six. I got some rust uh, happening up in the kick panel or kickboard mm-hmm. up by my uh, driver's side. So I got to cut that out and fix that, and then I can finally put the floor in. So I'm working on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see what else did we do. Uh, I obviously had to go trick or treating over by uh, my wife's grandparents. They always enjoy that. Uh, they don't get out too much at their age, so you know, kind of bring it to them. Uh, Evie was a, a mermaid. Okay. Mermaid, and Aiden was. Uh, why did you have to do air quotes with mermaid? <laughs> like I don't understand. Was there something? He likes his air quotes. What? I I, do. Why is Scott like so secretive and so like? I really want my hat to fit over yeah, my head. It does not happen. And uh, Aiden was, uh, I'm going to butcher this now. It's, not, it's like Sonic, but not Sonic. 
and it's a character I don't think we had as kids. There is uh, the it's seven. It's not up yet, I don't think. Uh, why not? Because I'm positioning it. Because he's positioning. He's doing he's producer he's magic. Don't, don't oh, work. my gosh. I'm wrecking the studio. Hats, Hats off. Hats, Hats down. down. Um, well, you let me know when people can see what we can see. Well, I want to know more about this 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 creature that's not Sonic that looks like Sonic. Uh, so There, now they can see it. Okay, there, there's the seven and all my wife's decorative. I did put the cat up. That That's all the only that's, thing I can do. I was I was so <laughs> impressed. Is that a blow-up cat? It is a blow-up cat. I was instructed to get an inverter and okay, so you ran an inverter off the Jeep and you yep. did the blow up cat. He learned blow from me cat. that you know he needed the inverter for yes. right. and, and I double checked it is an LED cat, so it was Shadow Hedgehog. There's my wife, the Shadow Hedgehog. <laughs> what? Yeah. So so I guess after us, we just had Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. That was the three right. that I knew. Right. And then somehow, since us, there's Shadow and there's another one. It's just see, Nick. I was with you, Nick. Uh, knuckles, yeah. yeah. Has, is and no, it makes knuckles. sense because he loves them. red, but okay. nope, he's all about shadow, which is all black. Basically, it's Sonic but black. Oh, and huh. according to my son, more powerful. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Sonic was Sonic had it going on. I yeah, mean, he was pretty powerful. So he, that's my uh, my son. Six weeks, he's all about Sonic the Hedgehog right now. Cool. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. And so, huh. Uh, so, yeah, and I saw a really uh, a adorbs picture of you and the family in your 36 Ford Crazy shirts. Yes, I, I should uh, give a shout out to my friend Ian Grout. He uh, drove down from Buffalo in his 32 Ford two-door sedan and hand gave me uh, 36 Ford Crazy shirts. Uh, didn't, didn't want nothing for him, just gave them to us, uh, one for each of my kids and my wife and me. So we took a family photo with the car. Yeah, and uh, really cool. Somebody, obviously, a friend who's following the 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 build, and yep, you know, wants the best for for you. And and, and, uh, and he yeah. is offered to uh, you know find out how much if people want shirts, and we'll do the legwork to get them made. So cool. Thirty six Ford crazy. Thirty four six. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That. What? <laughs> <You're>, what? <laughs> oh, all right. Let he leave. is that guy. That right. guy. Oh, can't talk, people. <laughs> Easy dinosaur. He was, Jeeposaurus he was Rex. sitting too close to Cheech and Chong. Right. That's, <laughs> <it>. <laughs> that's, that's exactly that's what true. it is. Uh, and with that, if you have managed to make it through, you're not going to want to dip out on the topic we have for you today. The meat and potatoes, we're going to be talking about joints, as I mentioned before. And uh, the Vanna White Hands that Scott is currently producing, we are going to be talking about the different types of of connecting your suspension to your vehicle. So Heim, Rod, Flex, and uh, Rubber. Um, and, you know, we have a number of examples. So those who are viewing um, this will be able to see some of it. We'll do our best to make sure that we describe this. Um, and we'll rep some businesses in the process. Scott is currently bear sucker holding is not up the honey joint. bear sucker. <laughs> Hey, and it's not it works, a joke. If you got munchies, uh, this <laughs> oh is the boy. time. Oh boy! <laughs> and then, and then, and then for the hashtag not sponsored, we're totally not sponsored because we're going to talk about a product that sucks. Can you tell what I'm holding up? No, no they're listening. No. They can't. No, tell. they're listening. Why would they be able to tell what if you were any, holding up? If anybody's trying, why to is put he up... the worst? <laughs> Because any, he sees a camera screen. If, if we took the camera screen away, he would true. think that I can't. I could see myself. <laughs> anyway, if it's kind of like when I turn down his headphones so he talks louder. True. <laughs> see the mean things Jeff does to me. <laughs> <laughs> We're, you're going to make us lose the monitors. We're not going to be uh, able to see the interactions. So on what set. I'm holding up is a nut insert where you drill a hole, put it in the sheet metal, you crimp it by some manner, and then you're able to thread a bolt into it. And they touched me over the uh, weekend. Over the weekend. So we'll tell you about that and talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of nut certs or inserts or yes. nut inserts um, and that have become so wildly popular in the aftermarket industry within the last uh, five, seven, ten years. Yep. All right. So Don't it's joints. coming back for you, huh? What's that? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I am trying to maintain professional rapport over here. Uh, nobody wants you. <clears throat> <laughs> all right, all right. So, there's the thing, folks. Suspension is uh, hypercritical to what we do 
as off-road enthusiasts. As my and dad used to say, if it connects you to the pavement, you want it to be good. <laughs> amen to that. And so that's why tires and suspension are and probably brakes. tires. Well, and that stops you. You know, that stops you. A wall will stop you too. That's true. A wall. Will stop. <laughs> Especially if your joint gives up. <laughs> what? What are you? You're not allowed to make joint jokes anymore. <laughs> <sighs> um, we're we're going to be talking about a, a few specific products that we have here in house, but that exist um, in the greater market as well. So a lot of people, when upgrading their control arms specifically, we're not going to necessarily get into the types of suspension. Though in the very near future, I'm totally geeked up to talk about um, you know leafs and and coils and long and short and so on and so forth. But in this specific instance, we're actually talking about what the bolt goes through that connects the control arm to either the axle or to the body. So if you are unaware, I'll break it down kind of in a very simplistic factor, right? So the Jeep body and chassis itself, your axles could reasonably drop out um, from underneath that, that whole assembly. You basically have four to six-ish bolts that connect the axle assembly um, to the control arm or the control arm and or other suspension apparatus to the chassis, right? So we're not talking tons and tons of crazy magic under the Jeep. No. We're, we're talking about some specific nuts and bolts. Now, installation, application, and usage of those, you know, how you're installing them, what products are you using? What torque rating are you doing? Is it a coarse thread? Is it a fine thread? We could get into the, the, the finite minutia of that. But in this specific conversation, we're going to be talking about basically flex versus rubber. And if you have been around the Jeep community much, that in itself will likely be uh, a conversation you at least touched upon. So why do we like rubber in our control arms? And it's also important to note, if you're listening to us and you have a brand new Jeep, the likelihood is you have all rubber in your control arms and suspension components. If you've bought a new Jeep, it's all rubber. And, you know, and also we hear oftentimes somebody wheeling their vehicle like, I love my suspension um, and how it works off road. Why would I need to change it to go to a flex joint? Mm -hmm. So why do we have rubber? Rubber is to isolate us from vibration and and harshness rubber kind of the short of it is it has the best road manners of any control arm component things that fatigue you while driving yeah so it it absorbs energy the best um in theory and those of you who are watching i can produce this uh nice stock uh new replacement control arm here for a tj this is uh reasonably what we would call a short arm and uh i'm holding up uh you know kind of a, an appropriate wishbone looking piece of suspension it has two rubber cleavite bushings at either end of uh, this kind of this wishbone uh, piece of metal it is stamped steel so it is configured in kind of a, a u or horseshoe shape um, it's honestly kind of robust in the way that they stamp it and they horseshoe it, um, for normal everyday use and application. Uh, certainly if you're off road and you're getting a lot of side load impact to your axle, this will cr- crumple, fold, bend, so on and so forth. Um, a little bit. The OE did that on purpose for impact purposes, so that if it was in an accident, uh, you have not made a spear that will dislocate itself from the vehicle, um, but that this will actually absorb know, energy, absorb and fold up some, which is basically what rubber does too. It absorbs the energy fed into it, so it does not feed back to you. So you know what you can see is rubber and rubber. Now, when you are in those off camber. Um, or articulated positions, uh, your vehicle is now kind of pushing pressure on those rubber bushings. Yep. Um, rubber bushings want to come back to where they are at rest. Correct. Now, 
That is why it is hyper critical when we do even just the most simple budget lift kits. And a lot of people will ask about our maybe our billing and, and finances. Oftentimes we're charging um, not the same amount as a full suspension, but a similar amount or a comparable amount as a full suspension job, specifically because we are actually breaking free all of the control arm bolts and suspension let, uh, components. Let everything get used to where it's going to be at now, at, at right height. And Correct. Then, and then we torque it all back down. And then we torque it all back down in a particular manner. As if you don't, otherwise you're twisting that rubber bushing and you actually are ruining it long term. Faster um, and, than and it would it, naturally. And the out. control arm wants to pr- spring back up. You know, I remember those early days when you're shoving the, con- the axle down and it's trying to get you right. to put your spring in and, and wish somebody would have been like, hey, Loosen up those bolts. Right. I mean, it's so simple, right? And so yeah. if anybody's done, you know, some some basic, uh, you know, basic spring shock maintenance in their in their driveway, in their house, in their yard, whatever, um, you're absolutely right. You, you got the pry bar out, and you're prying down on the axle. I remember shoving a bottle jack in between the frame and the axle. And yes. Thinking I was all, you know, trick. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's amazing how often um, on the professional end of things, we get vehicles in that have clearly, um, that we call it s- relaxing. As soon as we take out whatever piece that's in bind, the suspension kind of springs back to its original um, yep. OE form. Yep. And so rubber has that um, by when you sideload and torque the inner sleeve. You're locking that down. You're locking that rubber into into position. Now, there is a time and a place. And honestly, <clears throat> some rubber in your suspension can be very good. Yep. Um, my wife was lamenting yesterday and, and her Coopers, her, uh, her tire, starting to have a little bit of wear to it. Time for a rotation. And, uh, you know, ultimately we want that rubber to absorb that energy so that she has a more pleasant ride experience for how she's using her Jeep. Um, We do actually have flex joints in hers, which is probably unnecessary for how she uses the mall crawler. Yeah. Um, But for a lot of people and like this, this new TJ arm that we're installing, you know, Jeeps that are, you know, might see a weekend, you know, kind of a dirt road or, uh, you know, National Forest Access Trail, um, that kind of stuff. Rubber, rubber is perfectly fine. Yep. So what are you holding in your hand? What are you holding in your hand there? I'm holding a bushing that goes into uh, the front axle of, uh, well, JK, TJ, XJ, ZJ, all very similar. Totes. Um, The only thing that's different is the bolt's size. Uh, It is pressed in. It has a metal sleeve on the outside. And it is what connects your upper control arm to the axles. It's you know, specifically. So, and, and like the mad scientist saying that basically on, uh, the TJ, XJ, YJ, nope, not YJ, uh, unless we four link it, uh, as you should <laughs> MJ, ZJ, <laughs> uh, basically that front upper control arm bushing, a rubber cleavite bushing. That means the rubber is actually kind of mechanically bonded or it's, it's adhered to the sleeves, um, in the, in the, the bushing itself. And it um, is a 10 millimeter bolt. And the only difference between it and the JK is the JK has a 12 millimeter bolt. Yep. So, and honestly, the rubber between the two oftentimes don't change a uh, little industry secret there. They actually just thin the, uh, the metal sleeve a little bit. Yep. Drill, drill, drill action. Yep. So they, the manufacturers figured out that they could just kind of, they didn't have to retool anything. They could just drill out that sleeve or insert a smaller sleeve during the, uh, the bonding process. Now we do a ton of these. It's probably the most over, uh, overlooked suspension component on, uh, you know, on, under your Jeep. Um, and most will look at them and think they're fine, but they're actually not right. The issue is once the suspension is hanging or that, uh, bushing is under load, meaning, it has, uh, you know, now it's bound. Now it's that rubber supposed to be doing what it's doing, and it starts tearing away where it's mechanically bonded to the sleeve. Yep, and then they also like the dry rot first. So totally. you'll see lots of little cracks. On them. And once you're at that point, it's done. Its service life has passed. Needs to go bye-bye. And then in my hand now, we have 
basically its replacement for articulation. We have a ball with a sleeve built into it that's similar size, and then we have some are those neoprene um, nylon. No, yeah, it's it's that uh, uh, polyurethane type. It, it's a um, it's a plastic material. Right. It, the, well, each company is it's a it's proprietary. Yeah, it's special stuff. So Daystar Energy Suspensions uh, are one of the leading manufacturers for all the other manufacturers. And basically, they they have a sleeve that uh, gets pressed in place of that shell, and then this gets assembled inside of it. And on this specific one, it has these metal collars with Allen bolts that thread together. And it holds everything together. Uh, some of these are threaded, and then you have to have a special socket to turn them in. <coughs> so this specific one um, is actually Iron Rock Off-Road's uh, flex joint. And um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the good and the bad is that they bolt together. Bad for time, good for, for accessibility. <laughs> and And... I'm just going to talk about what this flex piece is. And what's interesting about these is you have this ball design. Now, if I was kind of hold it on end, it always kind of reminded me of um, some type of pottery or... Looks like an hourglass to me. An hourglass of, of some sort and shape. If you hold it sideways, it almost looks like those old candies with the twist ends. It totally looks That's like the little candies with the tie. twist ends. Um, or like a little bit of a bow tie. And... Each manufacturer, so flex joints are um, largely represented by uh, every manufacturer has a little bit of their own secret recipe. And that's what, when people are trying to figure out um, if they like JKS, if they like IRO, if they like Clayton, if they like Rock Crawler, um, you know, some of our, our leading manufacturers, um, the the secret sauce so is not necessarily in the diameter and girth of the control arm but within the compounds that they're using for their flex joints um, or their rubber cleave white bushings yep and uh <clears throat> and if you look at the basic design it's going to be similar across brands it is the secret sauce that, that makes them different the and that's that's what that's that's their hill that they you know that they have established that they're going to die on are their flex joints um there have been different manufacturers. Um, this specific compound, as far as this uh, kind of this polyurethane and, product. And, and I've seen harder or softer versions of that, depending on brand. And of course, as you can imagine, we just went from a rubber bushing to this hard, hardened plastic. Um, and of course, now we're relying on this plastic and grease to do the same energy dampening and cushioning job. Which is just going to transmit more vibration and stuff. And in some ways, that doesn't matter. You want that because now this is just going to lay right over. You're going to get that extra little bit of articulation. Now your tires are on contact with the obstacle you're on. And now you're ahead on the trail where the other guy that's got stock control arms just keeps hitting and bouncing back. And, and it's literally because traction of... The tire touching the ground 100 percent. we always kind of used to demonstrate that for some of our newer customers was we would uh encourage them to drive over an obstacle we had here at our property and we'd leave the jeep uh connected with the uh Front quick disconnects the sway bar sway bar and then we would disconnect the sway bar and just allow the jeep to maintain traction to the ground yep and the jeep could crawl over it in in four high or something yeah. you know or in greg's in my old xj's case two wheel drive totally <laughs> totally and <clears throat> so the big difference here between the flex joint and the rubber is that flex joint is going to allow you just a little bit more of an edge when you're off road but you will sacrifice a little bit more of those on road manners and you also have something you need to uh, maintain. Now you need to grease it. You need to, uh, you know, appropriately replace these rubber pieces or, or plastic pieces when and if they fail. Uh, so rebuilding your joints. Where a rubber piece, <coughs> in all intents and purposes, if you're just leaving it alone, letting it do. You set it and forget it. Maintenance free. Yeah, maintenance free. And uh, say about 100,000 miles is where they're good for is what the expectation would be i would say honestly depending on your use and the grease you're using uh you could be doing flex joints at twenty thousand miles yeah 
and uh, and that wouldn't surprise me, yep. you know, and that wouldn't surprise me that you needed to do some maintenance. To the it all joints. depends on the type of wheeling you do, and that's one of the things that's so valuable. Come in and talk to us, and and tell us how you use your Jeep, and we will help you decide: Do I need a rubber? Because they actually make one in rubber and one in flex. They make a rubber rubber. They make flex flex. There's all kinds of different options. And if they if you come in and be like, listen, I'm building a, a off road only rig. Yep. We're gonna go flex flex. If you're going to uh, more off road, but some on road, we're gonna go split it up. If you're you know daily driving it, we're probably gonna go rubber rubber, and you're gonna sacrifice that just a little bit of flex, but we're gonna gain it somewhere else. Um, so that is where it's really you're going to gain it in those on-road manners. We're going to dip off of flex other than to say that, um, you know, realistically with control arms, that's our big kind of determining factor is your utilization. So you have to figure out how you realistically are using the vehicle. Sometimes when you're kind of new to the off-road industry, you don't know how you're going to use the vehicle yet. So go use it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and and so you come in and say, oh, I'm never going to go off-road. And then it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, and so you'll end up going with rubber rubber, and then you start to really use the vehicle. And people are like, oh, I'm not going to be one of those rock bouncers. And it's like, okay, well, you know, really that's not what these products are made for. Um, yeah. These products are really made for you, the enthusiast, uh, to then utilize, you know, best practices for how you use your Jeep. Yep. Uh, the next so we've talked about rubber bushings. We talked about flex bushings or flex joints. Um, <clears throat> and again, we have those in a bunch of different manufacturers. Um, many of them are using their proprietary design. The next option is going to be what is traditionally called um, a Heim joint. And so uh, what I'm holding here is a, a Heim joint or a rod end. And... Um, and no, this is not what you buy at Tractor Supply. I was going to say, <laughs> man, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the the They had a bad rap. Yes. They had a real bad rap. And the issue has to do with when they initially came out. Um, they were very crude. Was, well, they were very crude because, of course, we've been using them in tractor in the tractor industry for 100 years, basically. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so if, you, if you're a person who has kind of a traditional three-point hitch tractor, you'll recognize this as, as being looking very similar to what's on the top link of your three-point hitch. And basically, uh, somewhere along the way, um, somewhere along the, lo- the way, Somebody looked at that stuff at the tractor store and was like, hey, you know what? I could use that to link up to the suspension on my rock crawler. Real quick, Chuck's chiming in asking, what am I looking for when mine needs service for the IRO? You come to your friendly Jeep shop and we get you rebuild kits that come with a new ball, uh, their durometer of plastic and the end plates. You save your sleeve or uh, end and then we just... So throw away the old, put the new in, fill it with grease, and off to the races. And then following up, Doug is asking, do you guys know the Curry Johnny joint replacement uh, part number for the Rough Country rod ends? Um, and we actually may know that one. And so we don't have a Johnny joint on uh, on set today with us. Um, but to follow up with, with Doug's question, and I'll just jump over there, that ultimately, and I, and I feel it's appropriate, you know, like when you're talking about, like, inventions that changed industries uh, to recognize the Curry Johnny joint. It's kind of where the technology started. And if you tear one apart, you're going to see pretty much this technology, a little softer durometer rubber piece. And I believe they were threaded into that, which made it really fun. Originally they were um, back in the day. And they have, (laughs) and again, each manufacturer has um, their own secret sauce, Yep. but how they move grease around the joint and the tolerances for their plastic durometer um, to grease journals. And I could, I could talk to, at length about, um, say, specifically Rock Crawler, who at one point in time tried using uh, special grease, triple zero grease, which was this highly viscous grease with the expectation that um, you would coat uh, the circumference of the ball joint or the flex joint um, with their grease 
And so basically their tolerances were intended to be so tight that uh, almost like an oil journal in an engine where you have, you know, oil between the, the, the pistons, uh, the piston rods, that you actually have a fine layer of oil that is, um, that is, is kind of sitting in there creating a dampening, a hydraulic yeah, dampening effect. Yep. Um, so the Curry Johnny joint, and, and that all ultimately got picked up by every every, every suspension manufacturer <laughs> because it was a system that just worked well. Yep. Um, and so we'll look into that, Doug, and see if we can't uh, send you something or leave a comment for you later on that. Um, I was talking about Heim joints or rod ends. This is not what you're buying at the tractor store. Um, what we have in, in, in-house, uh, what we end up using nine times out of ten uh, for our builder applications are uh, from a manufacturer called QA1. And um, what you'll notice, it's a, it's a similar in the sense that we have a pivot in the center. Uh, we kind of have like this housing. So, you know, by inside, by- it's basically a spherical ball uh, with a hole inside of it. And there is some sort of uh, cushion between that and the outside piece. Most of the time, it's, again, a plastic. Uh, these, you do not grease uh, traditionally. There are some that you do, but most of the time, you don't. Um, the downfall is is they are not protected to the outside elements unless you get special boots for them um, to keep the, the crap and the, gre- or the sand and the dirt out of them, and that's what eventually will take them out. Uh, and then, plus, it's very much a like metal on metal almost contact so very affirmative contact there's very little dampening or cushioning effect here almost none and uh rock crawler is a company who kind of prides themselves on using heim ends in much of their applications they do have their own style um and realistically i'm going to give credit back i'm going to throw it back to skyjacker who kind of pioneered in the early 2000s um Skyjacker and both ProComp had suspensions that really it's broke that. that really broke the the barrier uh, for our industry utilizing quality rod ends or Heim ends. Now the issue again was most of your Tom Dick Harry garages didn't understand what they were, uh, yeah. and uh, and, and make, also and depending on your noise. usage, and they so they it, made noise. So if you're going to you know, just come from the normal street driven ro- world and you're going to get in that Jeep, you're going to be like. What is this garbage? <laughs> and in theory, if you look at like the 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 size of this rubber that's absorbing the energy, and this rod end would have what they call misalignment spacers or spacers, um, which then these would take up a similar amount of space. As I, I hold them up and show the camera, there, um, ultimately, there's a lot less surface area, surface area, and dampening ability. Um, so rod ends have a a place they work well the as as scott was mentioning their downfall will be prolonged exposure to tiny particulate so sandy silty water like we have here around the great lakes uh the sandy salty beaches of our coastal regions um they do have uh the the better uh rod ends have a a built-in wiper seal but it's tiny. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and because, again, the flex joint and those types of, of products, they're, they're expecting you to grease them and so that the grease purges will, it. will act as a barrier and then purge that particulate. Um, really, the rod end doesn't have a fantastic protection against that. Um, there are, uh, as, as Scott mentioned, a couple of products uh, like little boot kits that you can install from Seals It is the primary company that we are familiar with. Um, and you're not supposed to put any type of uh, a grease because pre- petroleum, standard petroleum grease and certain plastics actually cause the plastic to swell. Yep. So depending on that manufacturer's proprietary uh, base for the plastic that's in their joint, a petroleum, a standard conventional petroleum-based grease may actually deteriorate and or compromise the joint Pretty darn quickly. Yeah. Pretty darn quickly. And I would say this is real hardcore stuff. You're going to be using these in your suspension if you're looking for all the the off-road prowess and you don't really care about noise or vibration on the road. You're just going from trail to trail kind of thing. Um, 
a lot of my steering and, and steering that we make is made out of rod ends and, and heim joints. Um, also, when this goes bad, uh, you're typically just replacing the entire end itself. Yep. Um, costs across the board are not uh, all that. There really doesn't seem to be a, a huge cost benefit uh, financially. They all kind of have their own place. Um, <clears throat> but uh, again, you know, this is a product that allows you to use, you know, bigger hardware, uh, have greater flex. So we start with the rubber bushing and that's just your best on-road manners. It has your least amount of flex. You move to your flex joint. They typically have a, you know, better amount of flex, pretty darn good until you get to a rod end. And then a rod end just will let you lay that suspension over, um, and it's, you know, can be a pretty impressive amount once you add misalignment spacers um, because there's just not that much body to it to contact the, say, the control arm pocket or uh, your steering throw uh, will traditionally use this as well. So uh, we have on with on set with us, which is kind of a neat one, is actually an offset rod end uh, or heim joint. And we're starting to see these used more and more application. Uh, we use these ourselves in steering applications. Uh, Scott has used them for tire carriers, which is a pretty cool. It allows us to, to kind of position the tire carrier appropriately. Um, and, uh, and my favorite when, you know, when working with Greg is we use it in steering applications uh, because it allows us to relocate uh, the throw of our tie rod or our drag link out away from the axle just a smidgy bit. And uh, gain just that little bit more travel and clearance necessary for our customers who really want the, to maximize or optimize their experience. So as far as our suspension and steering is concerned, those are kind of our, our most traditional manners. Now, it, we would be remiss to just be talking about joints just because it's something that you may have heard about. And so we're going to talk about our traditional tie rod end. Um you know, with this, it's always pretty much the same design. You're going to have uh, some sort of ball and socket inside this end piece. Uh, and most of the time, you're going to be greasable uh, to help keep that lubricated. Um, some OE ones are going to be plastic. Some other ones are going to have a, a metal uh, replacement inside. And basically with those, how we make it more robust is we make it larger. So pretend you go and steal one off a semi, put it on your on your Jeep. Now suddenly you have a lot more robustness. It was all the rage 20 plus years ago for one ton steering, one ton steering, basically, you know, so your F-350, you know, your 3500 Dodger Chevy and you would drill out the knuckles a little bit and you'd run this bigger ball stem design. So is this that is how I upgrade from a half ton to a one ton. Uh. Oh. <laughs> There he goes, folks. Yeah. <laughs> he did that. He did. So the the tie rod ends um, is is what we see utilized in the majority of our steering. What I'm holding here specifically is part of the Rusty's uh, HD steering assembly. Um, the other piece is uh, differences with these will be the internal construction obviously that socket design uh, may actually be a plastic itself so a lot of the oe manufacturers use a plastic socket and that's when we get into ball joint conversations um uh, some aftermarket ones will use a, a metal uh, or a combination of metal uh, socket assembly and then the boot itself so whether or not the boot boot is encapsulated or it's going to blow out um again it's if you rubber or neoprene or insert here what it is <laughs> right and that's a little bit of their their secret sauce that differentiates those different manufacturers so those are i would argue are probably the four primary uh joints that affix suspension and steering components to your jeep um and again we could get into kind of specifics or specialties about between which manufacturer uh obviously country of origin does make a difference um, that specific ball design that Scott was showing off, they were talking about kind of the hourglass or that, that kind of piece of pottery, that urn looking, um, product. If that is not appropriately, uh, hardened, heat treated, the metal composition itself is, is poor. The finish, sometimes they have like a, a chrome. It'll be chromed it. to protect it a little bit. And that's another thing too, depending on your kit, the cheaper kits 
they're going to get rid of the, the service packs first and the the more quality ones are going to use them longer that's another thing to think about as you buy your suspension am i going to be able to service this in 5 10 15 years from now right and that's and ultimately uh, with some of these other manufacturers they are constantly refining and uh, tweaking what they consider to be their already good product um, and so oftentimes, uh, and I'll use JKS as an example, just because this goes back 20 plus years in the very beginning, they actually just were purchasing, uh, from Curry, their, their Johnny joints, their Johnny joints. And uh, real quick. Thanks Doug for the information. We will get back to you and, uh, get that info over to you as soon as we can. Awesome. So the JKS was in their track bars. Now this is 20 some years ago, and this is not the JKS that we know and, and love today. Um, they were at that time, a, a you know, independent business, uh, sole proprietor, and he was, you know, figuring out the bends necessary for the suspension under his Jeep. And he was sourcing these parts from, you know, from a reputable leading pro, you know, company. Then as he developed his product line, he started to develop different, uh, you know, different yeah. designs. A little based bit on different that. durometer here and a little bit different yep. shape there. Oh, this needs to be a little bit this way there. And now he's, you know, they start to produce their own products. And I remember, um, you know, rebuilding a couple JKS track bars in the very beginning mm -hmm. and, and seeing the differences over the course of a couple years. Well, I mean, trying to get the, the kit for yeah. the early one was a challenge. And then at some points it just made sense to just upgrade the whole bar. We ended up upgrading the whole bar. That's yep. right. That's right. And so we did end up running into that. Now the last little piece while we do have all of this on on camera and and in your ear holes i think it's important to just introduce this concept um but not go too crazy into it uh you can find a forum or a facebook group fighting over it right now and <laughs> the <laughs> idea is that and when i look at this traditional tie rod end itself um and where it will affix to my steering knuckle okay um, it is at basically a single plane where mm. it bolts through. And that is typically and commonly referred to as single shear. That means that the load or force applied is moving um, here across the bottom of the tie rod assembly itself. And then this stem design. Uh, these stems are also tapered to take up any of that slack in that process. Any of these other suspension components... Um, and we'll just use this big, beefy Iron Rock off-road rebuildable end here, um, will actually be affixed on both sides, which is called... Double shear. Double shear. And uh, basically, now you are splitting the load applied. And so that's why your suspension components, at this point in time, are always uh, double shear, not uh, single shear. Yep. Um, and we sort of in some of our old vintage uh, suspensions, you had kind of a single shear application. Yep. Um, we don't see that anymore. And we always encourage you when you're, you know, when you're choosing different products and when you get when you get beefy enough that you're beating on the rocks and you're doing some pretty extreme stuff, then we recommend your steering go to double shear as well. Yep. So, uh, Taylor, happy <laughs> Halloween. Hey, happy Halloween. happy you, Halloween. You you may or may not have missed uh my uh hippie. My hippie man. So <laughs> All right. I hope uh I hope that this conversation about joints on Halloween has uh has enlightened you, made you happy and maybe a little case of the munchies for all that candy you may or may not get this <laughs> evening. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll be talking about hashtag not sponsored, a product that I downright despise. Hey Jeep family, we hope that you're enjoying this content and we want to make sure that you head over to sfj4x4.com, find some of this cool merchandise, give us a call at our facility 440-813-3663. Option one. Option one. And make sure that you tune in to our live podcast every Monday at 1019 a.m. And check out our updates on YouTube on Tuesdays and Fridays. Until then, Jeep on. And now it's time for our product spotlight. Hashtag not sponsored. Spotlight. Hashtag not sponsored. So I remember the first time I was introduced to these. And I Me too. cursed them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> because what are these? Nut inserts. 
So I was uh, I bought armor, and I was a frugal person, so I bought it used or, or secondhand. <laughs> I'm sorry, of course, of course, we uh, did. or in a scratch and dent. Right. And you know, the first thing you miss oh, is the, the hardware, hardware pack. Hardware, man. And I had some, and they had these stainless steel countersunk screws. And how I thought, many this projects awesome. killed? How many? How many projects did we kill because hardware? Yes. Right. How many things did we tear <laughs> apart? And then when we got back to it, we're like, oh, the hardware doesn't exist. And then you're out there for searching for three oh, hours. And it was always this you, most alien size. You you insert here. My God. No I used problem. to order so much hardware online and then and like it show up and it was wrong. wrong. Yeah. Or I'd break it. <laughs> All the time, Jeff. <laughs> anyway. I don't want to talk about it. This that. was the first time <laughs> with uh, the seven, when, the first tub. The little people don't know. I had multiple tubs yep, with that did. project. You did. And I love it when people are like, oh, should I do my tub right away? I'm like, yes, you should. <laughs> like, I, but I, I, I don't want to jump in that enthusiastically. Yeah. They're like, oh, should I buy something? A clean a clean Cherokee? Yes. yes. Don't build yeah, that piece no. of junk. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. And, yeah, and when there. it's wrecked a little bit, it's really wrecked. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, the this armor shall not be named. I went to put install it, and I'm drilling holes through the side of the body. And it was already crinkled up, of course, because I'm frugal and, and an idiot. And I had this bolt in a nut. And I'm if you like, can't see Scott's fingers, that's okay. I can't either. Yeah. But many manufacturers and uh, y- you know, and 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 suspension or not suspension, but uh, like armor manufacturers will supply this to you with a bolt, a bolt and a nut. Yep. And that is what you get and to they, install these. They tell you that that's what you need to install this, and I will say that is BS. BS. Uh, that is not going to work. You're going to f- maybe get one semi crimped in the body, and then it's going to go downhill from there. You're going to pull the threads out of the piece, and you're going to hate life, and your armor is going to look bad. It's going to look bad. It's going to spin on the backside. The paint's going to chew off of it. So then, and, and we, wait a second. I'm going to hold up just okay. one second and make a comment about the industry as a whole. Here's a little industry inside secret. Da-da-da. Reputable, reputable uh, armor bumper manufacturer had a product that they took to a large distribution company, big box retailer. And they said, hey, we're here to do business. Um, here's our supply chain logistics. We can fulfill your orders. And you know we're ready to rock and roll. You should be carrying our product. Big box retailer came back and said, you have to put an installation tool in there. They said, we don't care how good it is, how bad it is. There has to be the perception of an installation tool. So it's important. If you're listening to this now, the, the biggest piece of like frustrated advice I can give you is just because it's in the box doesn't mean it works. That's just the truth. Yep. And and that company had to go, well, hey, we need to sell. We need to you know get this PO, quarter million dollar PO over to this big box retailer. So we'll just throw a, a nut bolt. and a bolt in there. Yes. And uh, you know label it hardware pack 13. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. And they threw them into the box, and how many people got those, you know, products and thought they could install it in their driveway? And you can't. And you can't. It's, so, so, ah! then, so then we were introduced to tools, and like many times, tools make things better. Always. And uh, this is not the right side arbor for it, but basically this insert will now thread onto this piece. And now we'll look at all the mechanical advantage we have. Uh, for those that can't see, we're talking about what this looks like a piece of a, a pair of pliers, maybe. A uh, if you've seen a rivet gun, looks like a rivet gun. Basically yeah. the same thing. It's now, basically a rivet gun for the threaded inserts. And Adam's chiming in. That's funny. That's what Chrysler gives you for side steps. Uh, exactly. And yep. that is what we run and, into. And how many me- uh, <laughs> mechanics at the dealership don't do that? <laughs> or <laughs> trying, right? They have the tool at this point, point. And, yes. and that makes sense for us as professionals. But for the average DIYer who's who's getting this package that they're like well i'm excited i want to do this install go do it with my kid on the weekend and they're like i believe in this manufacturer that's why i chose their armor and i bought it from this reputable group not their fault people (laughs) so then we we the escalates and you get stainless steel ones you're like everything's better in stainless right amen stainless is better but it's a lot tougher so then we get into these bad boys (laughs) Which, which look, if you're listening, look like bolt cutters. They look like bolt cutters, and they have so much more. With an extra stem up the middle. Uh, so much more leverage. And these, but if this doesn't get it done, it's not going to get done. Now, important thing for a shop like us that honestly installs a lot of these. This threaded piece up here that the insert goes onto, that is a wear part. 
Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look worn on this, but I can tell you that is worn (laughs) from experience. It touched me over the weekend. Made you very upset over the weekend. Uh, That and uh, is a lot of challenge to do business in 2022. That is our battle cry. And the quality of everything has been suspect. Questionable, suspect, yeah. And uh, these little inserts are, are the same thing. And you, it's really hard to go get these uh, for Joe Average. But Amazon has them for days. All day long. But you got to read the reviews because they have had problems with the threads inside of these recently. I'll say probably in the last six months to a year. And I have... Uh, at least 12, if not 14, that do not thread onto this tool. The ones that did, it pulled the threads right out of it. So they were junk. I, I wasted a lot of inserts and had to go back to our old standby, the little rivet gun guy. And thankfully, they're steel and they were easy to do. And I was only doing a 1032, so it was small. <laughs> but when you get into like 3 8 5 16 ones of these, you need the big boys. And you need to replace the arbor. Which you can also get. So for those who are listening who may or may not be familiar with the product, the product itself, the the, can the be nut awesome. cert, yeah, the nut cert itself uh, looks a lot like a traditional thimble, right? And yeah. then it's going to be, the diameter of it is going to be sized appropriately for the type of bolt or the size of bolt that it is going to receive. So you have this thimble looking product, which is which is open on both ends. And then it's sized appropriately for the diameter of the hardware it's going to receive. Um, they what they are they start out, um, you know, in kind of a, again a traditional looking thimble, and then what through the through application of force, it will actually crush and mushroom um, a portion of it. It is designed to crush and mushroom a portion. That's why the little bolt and nut just is a terrible design. It doesn't have enough mechanical advantage. It doesn't do it. have enough mechanical advantage because ultimately what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have two box end wrenches basically, um, kind of horsing over them to crush this sidewall of this metal, um, which will then mushroom it up into a single shear, um, piece uh, so that this actually becomes double shear, but it's a single piece of thin, uh, you know, sheet metal. Um, and speaking of it being that, uh, Chuck is bringing up a great question. Are steel or zinc coated nut certs in aluminum body panels going to be an issue long term? So with anything, you have uh, the similar metal situation. It doesn't matter if you're using these bolts, what have you. Uh, in a corrosion situation, the weaker the material will go away first. So the biggest thing is to keep them protected from that corrosion by paint, fluid film, grease, insert here. As long as you can keep that at bay, you're fine. The minute you let corrosion take hold, the weaker of the material is going to fail first. These products have been used by um, by the auto manufacturers for decades, right? They're, they're really big in fiberglass to be able to give you a threaded spot in a panel uh obviously you can't tap fiberglass very easily so you could put these in and there's different types there's actually ones that have like little uh teeth on them that the glass will grab hold of these are obviously for metal the the real cool part of these say you put this in a panel and you booger up the threads you can take an appropriate drill and drill off a flange and knock this out of the panel not hurting the metal and then put a new one in and insert it, and you're back in business. If you have a good set of hand and a good set of drill bits and that kind of stuff. Yes. So it's it's one of those products that I wouldn't exactly recommend the average DIYer. I understand yeah, that. This is not for the getting started guy. It's really not. And yet every day on Amazon and a lot of those big box retail companies, armor and products are being sold that utilize this. Um, and so just endeavor – uh, educated into the process to make sure that this is a job that you are capable of doing in a good way. Um, we have had people come in and go, Hey, I need you to put this armor on because I tried it and it was bad. It's bad. Yeah. And we get it. And the nut certs are all caddy wampus. They're going every which direction. They're not spaced. Right. There are challenges um, inherently to the process. So, Uh, A product that has its place within our industry, I had started to mention it has been used for decades, uh, affixing lights and roof racks and all that kind of stuff to, you know, to our Jeeps and and trucks. Um, 
And so it is one that is able to be used, but in the way that it is used in mass consumption at this point, um, it has become watered down and more challenging of a technology. Um, so be careful when you go to do that and maybe invest in one of these good tools over here. Yep. Um, and they're not that expensive. to make your life go easy. Yeah. I mean, I think a couple of them start out around 30, 40 bucks. Yeah. If you really want to get fancy, 60 bucks will probably get you a really, really Cadillac version. And you know what? At that point in time, you'll be like the king of the neighborhood. And, and you'll be like you have a truck or a trailer. Everybody <laughs> will want to be your friend. <laughs> Folks, I hope that you enjoyed this conversation about joints and nuts and riv nuts and all those types of good fun things. Oh, dear. We're leaving headed to SEMA we'll be able to report back to you next Monday on all the goodies make sure you follow along on our uh, on my personal content and obviously our professional content to get some updates and some insider picks and, and sneak uh, sneak peeks at what's going on uh, the good the bad and ugly of SEMA in general all and, the Bluetooth dry shafts and uh, and big dubs and all that kind of stuff and I, I don't know I love that kind of stuff just the same I just don't love it on you know in our application so uh, i can be an auto enthusiast and have fun without being grumpy about it and chuck saying safe travels appreciate it chuck we will uh I'll, I'll let you all know how it goes next week head think about in the meantime head over to the i speak jeep podcast give that a like and a share make sure people are joining us there uh you too can support this podcast directly with one of these wicked cool stickers of the mad scientist and myself four dollars and 19 cents and that could be yours that goes to supporting this program and if you don't forget your custom color t-shirt custom color t-shirts uh we're trying to turn those out as fast as they're coming in so we greatly appreciate that you'll find those over at sfj4x4.com uh they we will be running on a skeleton crew this week so be patient with the guys spread the message (laughs) spread the message um because there will be more of us scouts offering free hugs Oh, <laughs> I hope that the, the no. Jeeposaurus Rex out- outfit Rar. stays here all week. <laughs> Until then, Jeep family, Jeep on. Jeep on. Mm-hmm.